Hey everybody, it's Pastor Steve and Pastor Aaron of that church. Remember, it's taking his anointing to your world, my world, my everybody's world. world. Yep. All at the same time, right? And it's and it's God wanting to say things to people, do things for people, but he has to have you and me yes. and her and, and and everyone around about that will listen to his thoughts, move on his thoughts, make his thoughts their ways of doing and being right. Right. Go back to Isaiah 55, yep. 8 through 11, and read that and, and live that. Look at how he's talking to you. And he wants you to be just like him. You see that in Ephesians 5, 1. To be imitators of mm -hmm. God. Do you see how all these things come together? Yeah. And and today we're gonna we're we're in chapter twenty seven of Matthew's gospel. I'm glad we're in the same chapter. Isn't right. that great? <laughs> and and here I want you to see how God did things just for us to set it up that we could be and do just as Jesus did. All right. So today Let's start off with a word of prayer, and then we'll get right into it. Okay. All right? So, Father God, it's you. We desire you. We want you. You are our teacher. We take you as such, and we, we thank you that you're always speaking good thoughts into our hearts. And we thank you that all the thoughts that you've spoken into everybody that will hear or ever hear these messages... We thank you that you're confirming mm -hmm. those thoughts yes, with signs following. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So, like I said, we're in chapter 27 of Matthew's Gospel, and we're going to do a quick review of Matthew 26. Now, in Matthew 26, there was so much in there. Can we really actually go and do it over again? No. Not God, quickly, anyway. <laughs> God, God doesn't expect us to go and do it over again, but he wants us to bring back to your thoughts some of these things that he said. Now, I, I want yeah. you to point out, I want to point out, God wants to point out, in verse 3, it says, then. Why is the word then there? And then you see in verse 14, another time it says, then. Why is it saying then? There's certain things that aren't trans given out here. They're, they're not shown here. Mm -hmm. But you have to see, go back and listen to that all again. Because God is bringing us to revelation of what he is doing and has done for us. Because the certain things had to happen before the next thing could happen. Do you see? Now... When, when Jesus says something, is that God saying something? Remember, he mm -hmm. said, I only say those things that right. the Father says. I only do those things that the Father does. That's what took place. So that the chief priests could do. Hmm. I know. Those are some, some different kind of thoughts. Down here, what is it saying? Then the twelve... Uh, apostles who was called uh, well, one, one of, of the, the twelve, 12 yeah. who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests. Now we're going to see a little glimpse of the inside of his heart today because of some things that are said. But I want you to realize it's it's only a small glimpse. Right. He was in remorse. Mm -hmm. All right. Now. What is the difference between remorse and repentance? I wondered that too, but I didn't look it up. Hmm. So, uh, you you can be regretful. And I think it's so funny how it says it there. But we'll, we'll get into that yeah. here in a few minutes. I want you to see in um, verse 21, And they were eating, and he said, Solomon, I say to you, one of you will betray me. This then was several verses before that. But then he says, he says it out loud again to them. 
which brought them remorse? <laughs> were they repenting? No. They were, they were like, is it going to be me? I, I don't want to do that. Right. All right. So as, as you look at 26, now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, praising God, gave thanks, and asked him to bless it. I'd like to point out this here. Uh, he blessed it. What blessing did he bless it with? Oh. If you go back to, um, I think it's all the way back, the blessing that God man. conferred upon man. Oh, that blessing. In, in Genesis, uh, what, maybe uh, five, three, four, five, something like that. <laughs> God, you mean where it says, be fruitful and multiply and yeah. replenish the earth? That's chapter 1, verse 28. Ah, one. God blessed them and <laughs> said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now, in the Amplified, it says something Oh, you're right. I could have read the Amplified. <laughs> um, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Using all its vast resources in the service of God and man, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves on the earth. Now, if you're using the earth's vast resources, mm -hmm. where did those vast resources come from? from it God. came from God. Right. How can we use something in the service of God that's his already? He gave it to man. He gave it to man for a purpose to use in the service of loving God. Mm -hmm. Right, which is loving God. Loving people. man. Yeah. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. All right. Both both there. All right. So I know I'm I'm hitting different things, but we we can't hit everything every single day. I hope you understand that. And then I, I like to point out here in verse 31, the second part of it, it says, For it is written, I will strike the shepherd. And the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Now that's in Zechariah thirteen seven. If 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 Jesus is going to be struck, and the sheep are going to be scattered, mm -hmm. what what is the purpose of that? Now why is Jesus going to be struck? Is it because he needed to be? No, he never did anything wrong. Right, worthy of it. Are worthy of it, right? So he's, he never sinned. If, if God is going to strike, wait, wait, why is God going to strike? No, no. It doesn't say that. It's well, not God striking. I will strike the shepherd. <clears throat> so if, if man is going to sentence Jesus, if man is going to put things over on Jesus, if man is going to place on Jesus, just like the scapegoat in the Old Testament, they would place all <laughs> their sin on him. All right? And then the blood of him would be on them. That's what we're going to see today. And I'm just prepping you to see these things as, as we look at it in the previous chapter before it happens all right so then it comes down and you know it goes through Peter's you know issues and I want you to see that in verse 41 that you may not come into temptation we need to all pray right? <laughs> why is he saying this that you may not come into temptation well the whole verse 41 says, All of you must keep awake, give strict attention, be cautious and active, and watch and pray. Watch and pray for what? what where, where are we watching? It's dark out. What are we watching for? We have to watch and pray. He's talking about us in our lives today. If, if we watch and pray... What are we watching for? Watching for the wrong thoughts to come? Watching that we don't act on those wrong thoughts? That's good. 
if if we act on the good thoughts from our Father, we won't have to worry about entering into temptation. Now, constantly, I think, as as we are are open to doing some wrong things, we were open to it before. Mm -hmm. The enemy knows that we were open and he's going to keep coming back that same way. Trying to tempt that same way. You have to watch that you don't go that direction. You have to pray. Pray what? What are you going to pray? You're, you're going to pray and say, God, I, I don't want to go this way. Help me. Help me. That's, that's right. Yeah. As you move toward God, he moves toward you. He, 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 he doesn't say that he's going to keep you from all temptation. The temptations come from within us. Do you see that? The, the temptations are something the devil's trying to bring and coerce from inside us. What we've allowed to stay there. That's the why the renewing of our mind is so important. Right. To get those things out. As we get those things out, the devil finds no foothold in us. Mm, right. Foothold. That's good. That's what he said of Jesus. Yeah. In Jesus' life, and we're looking at Jesus telling Peter, you got to watch and pray and, and get these things out of you so that you don't fall into temptation. All right. You, you see these things, but are you doing them in your life? Am I doing them in my life? Is she doing them in her life? If, if we don't do what we're supposed to do, can you expect to be free from those things? Can, can you move on in life without having temptations? You can. You can move on without temptations. Because it says that the, the word will cleanse you, wash you from what? The filth of what you've been part of. Or from all unrighteousness. What you've allowed yourself to move toward. Mm -hmm. Do you see all these things? Yeah. And are these things in the scripture? Yeah. This is talking about those very things. If you think about what it's talking about. He's talking about temptation. What is the temptation here that Peter is going to get into? Is it not <laughs> walking away from Jesus? Just right there. Spitting in Jesus' face. What, what, what is it that Peter's going to do wrong? Do you see these things? I believe you see them. So, as we move forward in this, we're, we're not going to get into much else here. Those are the things God was wanting you to see. And they, they follow up right in, in kind of order, right through chapter 27. Right. So let's start reading. There was a couple of things I wanted to bring out also on chapter 26. Excuse me. Um, that's okay. At the beginning, um, verse uh, 6, we're talking about Jesus going into Bethany and Mary coming and pouring the anointing oil over his head. That is something that had to happen to prepare him for burial. And it's something that she had to be prepared for long before this day came. And I'm always, I'm always trying to dig out the, the parts of the scriptures that are applicable to our life. What do I do with all this information? And so in this verse, in this account right here, it, it's helping me to see there's things I need to do now. Just like God told Noah way ahead of time, there's things God's telling me now to do. I don't know why. I don't understand it all, but I can be obedient. And I can set myself to listen and hear what he's telling me to do. And we're going to see Joseph of Arimathea in this chapter we're doing today, and he had to do the same thing. So because she did that, it also brought out something when she did and was obedient to do what she was supposed to do, right. it brought out what was wrong in Judas Iscariot. And then you had the then word. Do you see then that? Then this could happen. So, 
So things happen. You're supposed to do certain things. Say right. certain things. Right. You might not understand why you're saying it, but it might be a, a dagger in somebody else's heart or, or reveal something in somebody else's heart that they're having a problem with. Now, don't, don't go and start going toward people trying to bring, <laughs> you know, expose evil that's in their hearts. There's one more thing. All right. Um, at the end, in chapter, verses 70 through 73, <clears throat> we're seeing Peter um, being recognized by the people there in the courtyard after Jesus has been taken in. And three times people come to him and say, Oh, you're with Jesus. You're a Galilean. You speak like him. You, you've been around him. And my question to myself yesterday when we got finished was, can I be recognized like that? Do, when I'm out in the world, do people recognize me and say, oh, you've been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You talk like the Bible. You, you have hope. Do people recognize me or am I just blending right in? So that's my question for you to think about today is, can people recognize that we've been with the one, that we've been with God, that we've spent time with him? I think it's important to think about. I think it is too. Now I'm ready. All right. Okay. Now let's start reading. Chapter 27, <laughs> verse 1. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people held a consultation against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, Judas was afflicted in mind and troubled for his former folly. And with remorse, with little more than a selfish dread of the consequences, he brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They replied, What is that to us? See to that yourself. Now, do you see that it was just li a little more than selfish dread? Right. That's not repentance. Wait a second. Are we supposed to get all emotional and, and crying? And, and is that repentance? No. 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 It's, a, it's a decision. Right. Man, I did this all wrong. Right. I, I move forward toward God. I repent of what I've done wrong. Mm -hmm. Is that what he's doing? Do you see Peter went out and wept bitterly? I'm not saying that that's what you have to do to, to repent, mm -hmm. but little more than selfish remorse. He was worried about the consequences. He, what, was he turning Jesus over because he thought he was a bad guy? I no. Know. I think he needed the 30 dollars. 30, 30, uh, <laughs> right, pieces of, 30 pieces of silver. silver. Yeah. Do you, do you see that? Wow. Now, when when he's doing it to put money back in the bag, some people have said maybe he wanted it for himself. It, Jesus can't be taken. Could that have been what he was thinking? Jesus has never been able to be taken before. We've right. seen him walk right, right through right. crowds and yep. not be able to be touched. Yep. He, he completely stopped and just diffused, as we've been saying over the last several weeks, that everything that came against Jesus, he completely diffused. Mm -hmm. the, the whole situation to where everybody felt shame that was coming against him. Uh, do you see these things? He wasn't expecting that he was going to be taken. Jesus He's like, wasn't, yeah. My God, what did I just do? What did I just do? He he was slightly remorseful. <laughs> so there's so there's little things here that <coughs> we've read over, but he wasn't right. repentant. Right. What is repenting? You went this way. You were doing it this way. It means to turn completely around and go the other way. Yeah. Is that what he was doing there? No. He was sorry, but he wasn't repentant. What does it take to repent? Turning from your way and going the other way. Mm. Did he turn away from what he was doing? No. 
He threw the 30 pieces of silver into the holy place, is what it says. I know we haven't got there yet. Let's read it. And casting the pieces of silver forward into the holy place of the sanctuary of the temple, he departed and he went off and hanged himself. But the chief priests, picking up the pieces of silver, said, It is not legal to put these in the consecrated treasury, for it is the price of blood. So after consultation, they brought with them the pieces of silver. They bought with them the, the pieces of silver, the potter's field, as a place in which to bury strangers. Therefore, that piece of ground has been called the field of blood to the present day. Then were fulfilled the words spoken by Jeremiah the prophet when he said, They took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord directed me. Okay. Now, G, did you... I, I want to say something here. Okay. So the end of that verse 9 says, yeah. as, the Lord, as the Lord directed me. I saw that too. Well, that, that's part of what Zechariah 11, 12, and 13 says there. Um, why is it that the Lord directed? God, God was directed? God was directing. God's directing. God's giving thought to people. To do in line with what his word has said. Does that mean it's right? That it's that it's that it's what God's perfect will is? Hmm. There's there's certain things that you have to answer for yourself. What is God's perfect will? God's perfect will was from the foundation of the world that Jesus was crucified. That's what was right. happening here. That's God's perfect will for this whole situation. Now, what happens with these 30 pieces of silver, the price of him, it was depicted all the way back in Zechariah 11. And, and we see that God made a decision what to do with that money. What should we do with that money? God made decisions yeah. and put the thought into the man what to do with that money. It's, it's good to see these things. Is he putting thoughts in you? He's, he's trying to lead you his way. The, the flesh is trying to lead his selfishness way. That's what you see in Joseph, or uh, who? Judas. Judas. Judas Iscariot. And the enemy is leading them to do evil. So the enemy is thinking he's leading Judas to do this evil thing, which it was evil. Mm -hmm. And that's why there wasn't any, anything found for Judas, because Judas didn't get past himself. You have to get past yourself and move on what God is telling you to do. Right. Did God tell him to go and throw this money back in there? Hmm. I don't know. All right, let's keep going. Now, verse 11. Now Jesus stood before the governor, Pilate, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus now, said here, to him... Here comes that same, yeah. <laughs> same statement. Why are we pointing out this statement? L listen to what it says again. Jesus said to him, You have stated the fact. You have stated the fact. Before Jesus got before him, Pilate stated the fact. That you're the king of the Jews. He's the king of the Jews. Look at look at how how everything he's doing is for the Jews. It's for for the the people of the Jews. And and here it's bringing the people of the Jews out of sickness and disease and all, all of these things. Jesus was bringing them out of. Do you see that? Yep. Is that what a king does? A king loves his people and brings them out of things. That's what Jesus was doing. All right, keep going. But when the charges were made against him by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many and how serious are the things they are testifying against you? But he made no reply to him, not even a single accusation, 
so that the governor marveled greatly. Now at the feast of the Passover, the governor was in the habit of setting free for the people any one prisoner whom they chose. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when they had assembled for this purpose, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to set free for you, Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? For he knew that it was because of envy that they had handed him over to him. All right. Now, Pilate, we're seeing into his heart a little bit. We're seeing in and saying uh, mm -hmm. he sees that it's for envy that Pi the, the priests and Jesus is turned over to Pilate right. because of envy of the chief priests. Right. All right. So if it's envy that they're doing this far, is that a sin? You're, you're covetous of your neighbor's things. Mm -hmm. You're covetous of, isn't that one of the Ten Commandments? Yep. Yep. Remember the, the first four are toward God. Yeah. The, the last six are toward man. Your mom and dad. Your, your brother, your, your sister, neighbor. your neighbor, yeah. right? Yep. How, how you move toward man is how you move toward God. And that's what you see through this whole Bible. And here in Jesus' life, this man that's set up in authority has wisdom enough to see why these are being, why Jesus is being turned over to him. Yet he has to, in his position, do something about it. He can't just say, I'm not doing this, y'all. <laughs> he has to do what he has to do. And why does he do what he has to do? Because fear of the people? He, he is a ruler of the people. Here in the United States, they're supposed to rule for the people, of the people. How, how, how does that all go, <laughs> right? You, you get that? So if, if the people just allow things to happen, then they're, they are the ones that are bearing the penalty. Here in the United States, if you let things go and let things go, letting people over you do whatever they want to do, is that right? No. No. Because you are going to bear the penalty. Do you see that? That's what's happening here. This man ends up washing his hands of this whole thing. Like, <laughs> this is all on you. Yep. You're desiring this. That's not in my heart. He seemed more matter of fact, not really run by fear or, you know, whatever. He Just, had a position. Yeah. And he, he could separate himself from the guilt of somebody being accused. Right. Do you see this? All right, keep going. Also, while he was seated on the judgment bench, his wife sent him a message saying, Have nothing to do with that just and upright man, for I have had a painful experience today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders prevailed on the people to ask for Barabbas and put Jesus to death. Now, I wanted to point something out. So, <laughs> if a wife of yours, if a wife of yours has a dream, you're in a place of position and a wife of yours has a dream and says, don't have anything to do with this. Don't have anything to do with this just man. Right. All right. She knows he's just because of what? Who told her this? Well, it could be an inward witness. The Holy Spirit. It, it was a dream. That, where does dreams come from? Bad pizza. No. <laughs> Cereal at bedtime. <laughs> oh. So, where, where do these things come from? It comes from either the Father giving you thoughts, your flesh speaking to you, because of your regret, your remorse. That's what his, his flesh, talking, talking Judas. about Judas, mm -hmm. the betrayer, his flesh was talking to him. Are the wicked ones talking to him? What, was, what, what way is the wicked one going to lead you to do wickedness? Mm. Was Judas being led to do wickedness? No, his flesh was leading him. He was still selfish. 
You hadn't gotten rid of that. All right, what is this man in position of power being led, and his wife is being led by what? Something from God. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's Again, the governor said to them, Which of the two do you wish me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all replied, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What has he done that is evil? But they shouted all the louder, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but rather that a riot was about to break out, he took water and washed his hands in the presence of the crowd, saying, I am not guilty of, nor responsible for, this righteous man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, Let his blood be on us and our children. All right. <laughs> so what is that saying? Now, this is talking about the... the consequences of sin being on who or whom <laughs> as we should say right you and your children let his blood be on us now as as a christian is that not something we say let ah. his blood be on us yeah we plead, we the, plead blood the blood of jesus yeah. over us yeah wait a second his blood is righteous blood and it removes uh, removes from us all sin cleanses us from all unrighteousness now now wait a second why is this being said here is different than why we say it but it was said uh, according to uh, Joshua 219 so it's being fulfilled that the blood is going to be applied to the people I took it as that the, the consequences of taking his blood would be on them and their children. Do you see? Yeah. All right. Why do we want that? We want it. That's not what they wanted. Oh. You see? If you go back to Isaiah 53, 11 and 12 right there and read that it's you and Jesus have to make his sacrifice your sacrifice. Right. It's, it's the two of you. Two of you coming together, making a, a covenant? covenant proposal. It's, it's making a covenant. Jesus made a covenant, or he is the covenant sacrifice that we sacrificed, that we received, this being done far us right, on because our we are we are receivers of a covenant jesus made the father made in jesus's blood a covenant an everlasting covenant that shall never be disannulled you get it as we take that blood <clears throat> it cleanses us from all unrighteousness that's what they were doing but were they doing that all right, let's keep going. Verse 26. So he set free for them Barabbas, <coughs> and he had Jesus whipped and delivered him up to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the palace, and they gathered the whole battalion about him. And they stripped off his clothes, put on a scarlet robe, a garment of dignity, an office worn by Roman soldiers of rank, upon him. And weaving a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and put a reed staff in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they made sport of him, saying, Hail, greetings, good health to you, long life to you, king of the Jews. And they spat on him and took the reed, the staff, and struck him on the head. And when they had finished making sport of him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own garments on him and led him away to be crucified. As they were marching forth, they came upon a man of Cyrene named Simon, this man they forced to carry the cross of Jesus. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Reading back in Isaiah 53, in verse 4 of 53, it says, Surely he has borne our griefs, sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, and carried our sorrows, 
and our pains of punishment. If you see yourself in there, everything that Jesus is going through right now is for you. He got whipped and scourged for you, mm -hmm. for your healing. He got spit on, mocked mm -hmm. for you. All of it was yeah. for you. And here, in, in, in the second part of this, verse 5, it says, He was wounded for our transgressions. Everything you've done wrong. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. We were guilty. We had done things wrong. Mm -hmm. Every one of us. From the age of, what, two years old on? You see children acting up and acting out against authority. All right. As you come down and you see this, the chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see this? Yep. Yeah. And with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Mm. Now, now, when you receive that sacrifice, all of that's for you. That's what he did for you, that you could be cleansed from all unrighteousness. Right. That you could be set free from all of that guilt and, and stuff that, that you've done. You can wash, the using the word, renew your mind to the way God intended it to be. And wash those things from your life. Wash the, the remembrance of what you've done from your life. Right. And move forward with God's thoughts only. Right. And give the foot place of the, to the devil of nowhere in your life. I know I said those things kind of funny, but... Mm -hmm. the foot, give no foothold. That's what Jesus did when he went up on, the, on that... To, into the wilderness to be tested and tried you were tested and tried and found wanting <laughs> he was tested and tried and found superior victorious victorious over the wicked one yep. now the same way the devil is tempting and testing us with thoughts God has given us his thoughts his way of escape the temptations are going to come, but he is making the way of escape out of every time when you continue to look to God for the way of escape. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yeah. That's what I wanted you to hear. God wanted you to hear that yeah. today. Let's keep going. They offered him wine mingled with gall to drink, but when he tasted it, he refused to drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided and distributed his garments among them by casting lots. So that the prophet's saying was fulfilled. They parted my garments among them, and over my apparel they cast lots. And you see that in Psalm 22, 18. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. And over his head they put the accusation against him, the cause of his death, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At the same time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right hand and one on the left. And those who passed by spoke reproachfully, and abusively and jeered at him wagging their heads and they said you who <coughs> would tear down the sanctuary of the temple and rebuild it in three days rescue yourself from death if you are the son of god come down from the cross you know it's 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 kind of funny it's kind of i want you to think about this remember when um uh, the Sons of Thunder's mom came up to Jesus and said, mm -hmm. I, I ask you, you know, give, give place to my, my sons, one right. to your right hand, one to your left hand, Right. when you enter into your kingdom. Jesus is getting ready to enter into his kingdom. Are these the two places she was desiring for them? No. But are you able to drink of the cup I'm getting ready to drink? Remember? He asked him. Yeah. He, we are. We have to lay down our lives, laying down our lower life. Our, our lower life is one that would do selfishly. 
like Judas. One, one would be our lower life of following just the desires of the wicked one and doing his will. Do you see that? Yeah. But our higher life is to take the thoughts of God and to do his will. Right. Letting go of our lower life will find our higher life. Which what, is much better. What God intended us to do here in this earth. God gave us a place in what he was doing. Every single person on the planet has a place in what God's doing. And as you move toward God, it'll open to you. You'll see a little bit of it at first. You'll, you'll see a little bit more of it. As you're free from your low life, renewing your mind to the Word of God, you're freed from those footholds the devil has had in you, and you can see more. Do you see that? That's Isn't that good. a good way to look yep, at all that? It's really good. God is opening unto us that we should be free from that lower life. Yeah. Okay. Verse 41. In the same way, the chief priests with the scribes and elders made sport of him, saying, He rescued others from death. Himself he cannot rescue from death. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in and acknowledge and cleave to him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he cares for him and will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Where were all those thoughts coming from? The evil one. The evil one. Tempting him. He was able to come down off of that cross. Right. It wasn't a temptation unless it was possible. Right. That's good. Who, who's tempting him? The wicked one. And the wicked one is using people that should be, have recognized him long ago, that he was the Christ. Now, do you see those things? Now, you have to realize the wicked one's going to be talking to you, trying to lead you off. Your flesh is going to be trying to talk to you to lead you off, just to do what, what feels good to you. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what you see in the world today? People just doing whatever feels good? No, no worry about, oh, but the worry is always still there inside their heart. And that's what you're seeing, the worry come out in these days where high stress is. The worry is still there. They're fretful. Right. You're supposed to come to them with words from your father to, to draw that out. Words of faith. Too, Wait a second. Not fear. Who's who's working where? You're not working in them. You're working from the outside. You're supposed to say things, but all the while the Holy Spirit's working from the inside of the people that you're speaking to. He's he's judging. He's not so much judging. He's he's condemning them of of these thoughts. And here, as you speak words, it, it brings those people to, oh, that's from God. What I've been hearing is from God. And then they have the chance to make it right, to repent, move away from those thoughts, move toward God. Right. Do you see that? All of this is in here. Do we see it? All right, let's keep going. And the robbers who were crucified with him also abused and reproached and made sport of him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour, noon, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour, three o'clock. I want you to see that both robbers were, were, were condemning him. Right. Saying reproachful things to him. One of them changes. How does he change? He takes thoughts. From God. Even on the cross. Did you, did you see that? Yeah. He knows he's done condemned. Wait a second. These thoughts that I've been saying aren't right. And he turns. He turns away from that and starts coming against this other person that's coming <laughs> against him. Do you see this? Yeah. Watch, watch what, what transpires here. Well, I don't think we see that in this account. Oh, we don't? Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Wow. 
and about, <laughs> but we all know it's in another account. And about the ninth hour, three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me, leaving me helpless, forsaking and failing me in my need? And some of the bystanders, when they heard it, said, this man is calling for Elijah. And one of them immediately ran and took a sponge, soaked it with vinegar, a sour wine, and put it on a reed, staff, and was about to give it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him from death. And Jesus cried again with a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Now Jesus is quoting Psalm, Psalm 22, 1, right? Why is he quoting Psalms? When, when you quote the Word of God, what happens? The Word of God. When you quote the Word of God, you are comforting yourself. You're building yourself up on your own most holy faith. What did, what did uh, David do? He encouraged himself with the Word. He encouraged himself with speaking the Word. That's how we do it. With the remembering of the goodness of God. Do you see that? As you quote things from the Word of God, he he couldn't speak anything else. He was only right. speaking those things he heard his father say. Right. Now, he's speaking what sounds like remorseful thoughts. Right. And, and he's speaking something that's... Go back and read. You know, 69, 29, or 21, in, in Psalms 22, 1. And see what is taking place. As Jesus is on that cross, he's speaking out the word of God. Mm -hmm. And then he comes down to the end and says, it's finished. Right. Right? Okay, let's keep going. Okay, verse 51. <coughs> and at once the curtain of the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep in death were raised to life. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. What people did they appear to? All people. Their family members? Those that were in the hierarchy of the church? Who, who do you think they showed up to? Those whose hearts were turned toward God already. To encourage them? They're bringing encouragement. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're saying what has just taken place here in this city is Jesus being raised, aren't going to hell for us. This happened at the time of his death. He, he was headed to hell for us. It's finished. He's, he's in hell now. It's, it's complete. My penalties are completely paid for. They can be wow. raised from the dead now. Why, why did these things take place? As a witness. And to fulfill what the Word said. And to fulfill. Yeah. You see? As we fulfill and do things in fulfilling the Word of God, God's in it. All right, let's keep going. When the centurion and those who were with him keeping watch over Jesus observed the earthquake and all that was happening... They were terribly frightened and filled with awe and said, Truly, this was God's Son. There were also wow. numerous women there, looking on from a distance, who were of those who had accompanied Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary of Magdala, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. And Joseph took the body and rolled it up in a clean linen cloth used for swathing dead bodies, and laid it in his own fresh, undefiled tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. And he rolled a big boulder over the door of the tomb and went away. And that's where I want to bring up what we talked about. Mary had that precious oil that he poured over Jesus. That took forethought. Noah built an ark. That took forethought. Joseph 
had the, had purchased this land and had this rock hewn out for a burial place ahead of time. He had to have he had to have followed the leading, the thoughts of God inside, maybe not even knowing why. But maybe he did. He was a follower of Jesus. Maybe he had that witness and knew what this was for. It's important to see. And and seeing that, you know, since she stopped us, with, I'll, I'll say these. I was going to wait until we got to the end. But truly, this was the Son of God, is what a centurion said. Where is he getting these thoughts from? Mm. You You have to watch where you're getting thoughts from. You have to stay it stand as a bouncer, like I say many times, at the door of your thoughts, saying, "What's your intent here? What what is this thought? And what's your thought? This thought's intent." Right. No, no, you're that's bad. Get out of here. You have the choice, the right to choose thoughts. Right. He had he had heard these words. But he didn't believe them. Now that he's had some proof and he's seen some things happen, he believed those words he heard before. The whole stirring of the earth. <laughs> the, the, the things that transpired. Yeah. The clouds, the whoa that was happening. All right. Keep and going. Mary of Magdala <clears throat> and the other Mary kept sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, that is the day after the day of preparation for the Sabbath, the chief priests and the Pharisees assembled before Pilate and said, Sir, we have just remembered how that vagabond impostor said while he was still alive, after three days I will rise again. Therefore, give an order to have the tomb made secure and safeguarded until the third day, for fear that his disciples will come and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead, and the last deception and fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have, a guard, you have a guard of soldiers, take them and go. Make it as secure as you can. So they went off and made the tomb secure by sealing the boulder, a guard of soldiers being with them and remaining to watch. All right. Now, as we saw all these things transpiring, now they're happening for a reason, to fulfill all the words that were spoken of Jesus before right. he came. By his father, right? Mm -hmm. By prophets of old, right? By men that wrote them down, right? All right, so that we could read them, right? And see that Jesus is just fulfilling all that was spoken of him, right? That's to fulfill everything the father wanted to happen, and had to happen, had to happen in a court of law to show that everything was completely filled to every jot and every tittle right nothing that the wicked one could bring mm. any kind of true any kind of uh, accusation right against that what Jesus did didn't completely fill and fulfill everything for us and and here just at us receiving Jesus as our Lord and our Savior making his sacrifice, our sacrifice. Do you see that? It separates us unto God from, from the state that we were in. Every man, woman, and child on this planet was in this place that, that nobody could get out of. Jesus was the only way out. Right. And Jesus is still the only way out. If you receive him today as your Lord and your Savior, you can have your way out. All right? Right. Take, take it. Take it. Just say, Jesus, you're my Lord, my I'm Savior. Savior. Yep. I take you as my Lord. I take your sacrifice as my sacrifice. I, I declare you're my Lord. I'm going to follow what you say. That's what that means. And it's the thoughts from the Father that you're going to follow from here on out. The thoughts from Jesus that you're going to follow from here on out. You're going to take his thoughts only. Right. And with his thoughts, his word, 
you can cleanse yourself of all that other unrighteousness mm -hmm. with his blood. It separates you from that previous life, previous thought, previous words that right. you've spoken. Yep. And that's how you cleanse your mind with the word. Absolutely. Renew your mind. How long does it take for you to change? The world has come up with ideas. How long does it take for you to change habits? Right. Habits are only ways of thought. True. If you think about it. Yeah, that's true. If, if in 21 days it takes you to change your habit, you can change your life that same way. Taking his thoughts, mm -hmm. meditating on them day by day. Right. Don't mm -hmm. let those other thoughts have the upper hand. Take his thoughts and cleanse yourself of your old ways. That's good. Of what the yeah. enemy has brought into your life, sown into your life, those seeds of junk, right, trash, selfishness, selfishness, yeah. lust, every <laughs> impure way. Yeah, you you saw uh, a small uh, smattering of it um, back here in in uh, verse nineteen of chapter fifteen. Of, of all that the wicked one is bringing against you. You can see a, a fuller view of it in Mark 7, 20 through 23. You see a, a fuller list of it. Of and what there's, not to think about. And there's <laughs> other things in here. And then go and look up those things that you are supposed to think about. And that's in Philippians 4. And, and as you think on these good things, Putting away those other, that lower life that you were trying to live. Mm -hmm. Reach for your high life and you will have it. God is right, right there working in your life to have your higher life that you can live before him. And then also before other people, drawing them to mm -hmm. him. Yeah. And then look for God's thoughts. Pray for God's thoughts, that he will give you good thoughts to encourage others with. That's what this world is, is, this life of Christ is about. Life of anointing that he, the Father, would speak through you to other people. That's what that's all about. And you can do it. Mm -hmm. And we want you always to remember, like we always end every show. Every show. <laughs> <laughs> every video. Every video is that God, God loves, loves you, and we, we love, love you, you, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Now take your place as you take his anointing to, to your, your world. world.